Matter of fact, speaking of the Vietnam War, we're going to that amazing race. Yeah, that amazing race, what happened, uh, the amazing race had a base camp. They have like a, a destination, and this destination was Vietnam. So all the peop- all the contestants had to make it to Vietnam. You know, however they got to get there. You know, right. you know how the race goes. They get their plane. Because yeah, I didn't understand what the protest was all about. Yeah, it's a memorial. It was a Vietnam memorial that they used as the base where everybody had to so make it. So it was what, people were stepping on graves or something? No, it's just the fact, it's just a it's just a statue, really. Oh, okay. You know, representing the, the soldiers of, of Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And this, but they just made that a point of base. You know, this is where you got to meet the mission. Because the mission is for everybody to make it to Vietnam, get to this spot. Right. Yeah. And so anyway, a, a, a news reporter Bob Beckel, I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. He works oh, for he Fox News. Fox sometimes. Yeah, right. on that five, that right. Fox he's five. He's a Democrat. Show. Too. Yeah. Right. He, matter of fact, he protested the war, but yet he Back was. Back in the 60s? Yeah. He did? Yeah, he protested the war. He was against it. Mm-hmm. And, and let me tell you about this war. This war was North and South Vietnam, just like North and South Korea. I don't know why they always have it, North and South. Right. The North is the bad guys. Well, the South. Hey, divide and conquer. Let's <laughs> right. split them up and make them fight each other. Crips and blood. <laughs> But the North, they always got the North as the bad guys, and the South is always the good guys. <laughs> so we was helping the South mm-hmm. uh, fight communism. You know, that's what the Vietnam War was all about. Right. Well, there's one other thing I heard the other day. I was at the VA. You know, I go down to the VA because I'm a disabled veteran. Right. And I went to the VA, and I was talking to a young – well, no, he was an older veteran from the Vietnam War who fought in the war and got wounded. He told me – this is what he told me. He said – I don't know if you guys believe this or not, but he said they was fighting over the, they got coal mines in Vietnam and the coal in the Vietnam is 10 times greater than the coal in America. <laughs> That's the same thing now, they fighting I believe that because they go around the world getting the best. Everything, right. huh? Right. Because, you know, diamonds in coal mines, too. Right. So Vietnam had to, that's That's, that's always un, about that money. But that's under, you know, the news ain't never brought that out. And right. then getting to the news, my point about the news. So the news, what I was angry about, it's how the media, when I was, because I was in during the Vietnam War. I never went to Vietnam, but I came in during that time. And the media had people spitting on the soldiers when they came home, calling them baby killers all the time on the news, showing everything negative. So it turned America against the soldiers in Vietnam. But now we go to Iraq behind uh, weapons of mass destruction, which That's what we they never, yeah, right. they told us that. So we went to an illegal war. I call that illegal because you lying about starting a war. Right. So for 10 years, the media has been pumping up Americans to where every person that went to war in Iraq is a hero. And my whole point is this. Heroes, whenever soldiers go to war, they're just doing their job. Right. They should always be heroes. So you owe an apology to those Vietnam vets. You know, the I media know. does. Yeah, the media does. Because the people wouldn't know what was going on over there unless the media told them. Right. right. You right. You know, those those Vietnam vets, they really did come back with so many issues. I mean, I have oh, I don't know you. a lot of them. My neck, my back. Thank but you. But the the ones that I've met that were actually in Vietnam, I mean, dealing with Agent Orange. Oh man, Agent uh, Orange. Heroin addictions, talking mm-hmm. about that. Oh, coming, they had that in American Gangster. Yeah, coming back sure with did. Asian wives. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and I ain't saying that to slam Asian women because, you know, that's what they was there for. But, you know, I did see somewhere where uh, CBS did issue an apology to this group. Oh, now they did. For for what they did about the amazing race, they did give an apology. So we forgive them for that. I'm going to do like you do, Milo. I got a question about that. I got one question. One question. Who do I have to write a letter to to get an apology for Roots? I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> On a pause. <podcast. laughs> 
a car wash. <laughs> well, you're not going to get, well, Bill Clinton is the only one who's ever apologized for it, but anybody, you're not going to get anything. <laughs> Wait, car, you said car wash. Uh oh, here we go again, Boy, the car wash. That, that movie make my skin crawl. I, I That's understand. the greatest movie on the face of the earth. <laughs> that is That's one movie. of my third movies, man. That oh. has everything about life in it. Yeah. You know, you what? You got one brother trying to find himself, Abdullah. You had the player in there. You got the, the player. Muslim, you Abdullah got, was militant. You got the you got the Indian smoking herb. <laughs> we all. You know, the Indians smoked the peace pipe, so they got the Indian. This one smoking the herb. Man, ain't nothing wrong with smoking weed. Weed is from the herb. God put this here for me and you. Take advantage, man. Take advantage. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They then did. you got the two. You got the gay brother. Oh, we was talking about. You got the gay brother in there. Yeah. Um, well, see, that's balance. See, it right. was balance. See? <laughs> All yeah. we need is the businessman brother. Did they have the businessman brother? Uh, the businessman? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Oh, who, oh, him? the Jewish guy. The son. Uh, oh, but the black businessman. Message. Oh, the black. Oh, yeah. They had the Message. one. They had, to, they had the one brother talking to his. Remember, he was going to college mm-hmm. and his girl pulled up. Yeah. Yeah, he was going to be a black businessman. That's right. See, oh, that okay. was balanced. Okay, well, I give it to him. I, I never get past. <laughs> the head. I, I never get past the first five stereotypes. They so. still uh, had Richard Pryor. He was the preacher with ladies, with ladies, <laughs> with the with the three uh, or four, right? <laughs> Dressed like a pimp, <laughs> talking like a man. <laughs> What's happening? The player of the year is in it to win it. Cause I'm gonna take the crown in just about a minute. <laughs> right. <laughs> so go ahead. Oh anyway, God. we got off subject. Yeah, we <laughs> Let's get into this standing the ground, man. Folks, Uh-oh. y'all need to know about this story In Texas. Right here. This happened, I believe it happened like over a year ago. It's been Not that long? about a six months ago. Okay. Yeah, and it never, it never went year. major. And what happened, folks, is this. A black woman was in a car accident with a, white, a young white male. Mm-hmm. And I guess when they pulled over the exchange and change yeah. information, yeah. white guy got aggressive with her because you right. know how they feel about their trucks uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was texas right yeah so yeah it was texas and you know what and you know what texas that's the place where they drug that brother on the truck until his head oh, fell off oh yeah so you know how that goes so no wonder she was paranoid she didn't know what <laughs> that man no, was gonna do yeah and from what i read the accident was his fault they mm-hmm. pulled out and he banging on her window and trying to get her door open and I mean, I don't know if y'all ever been around somebody who bang on a window in a car. It might not break, but mm-hmm. it feel like it's going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and it was only a couple. This is in this same town now. Mm-hmm. A few months before that, there was um, a white man who killed a black lady with a hammer. Are you and serious? he drug her behind his truck to a sand quarry. Wow. That trucks is... And they never said nothing else about it. But this woman, she trying to protect herself. She shot him. And I'm not saying she should or shouldn't have shot him because I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But the papers all quoted his sister-in-law saying, oh, well, why didn't he just drive off? Well, you why know we're going to get there. Good so why didn't Zimmerman just drive off? <laughs> right. Stay get in the, his hand, the, damn in house. His, <laughs> that's right. Stay in your lane. I mean, at least this man was attacking her. Trayvon was just walking home. Yeah, that's true. some Skittles. Yeah. This dude could have been on you know? drugs. He could have done and, anything. And I was wondering why it didn't go big because. Yeah, why didn't it? Well, maybe because after, uh, remember after the Trayvon Martin incident? Mm-hmm. You know, in Oklahoma, Tulsa, in Oklahoma, two white guys went around and started shooting black people. Mm. Wait. Yeah, right. And this story never went big. It happened never like a month big. or two after Trayvon uh-huh. Martin uh, case. Wow. Yeah, they just went around shooting black people, and they killed three of them and wounded two, just randomly, right? So when they finally caught them, because they put everyone on all the black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh-huh. on alert, you know, okay. like, hey, could be some hate crimes going on. Mm-hmm. When they finally caught them, guess what they said? What did they say? The first guy said, well, we thought we might, after the Trayvon uh, Martin thing, might might be a race war. 
Mm-hmm. So they're gonna stop. So you gonna start was- driving around shooting black people? That ain't that ain't no war. Ain't right. that what Bush called a preemptive strike? Yeah, oh. that's like they <laughs> okay. might have known Bush. Right, right. And yeah. then so finally he broke down. The second one just broke down and said, "Listen to this." Mm-hmm. He said they killed those black people because three or four years earlier, his brother was killed by a black man. Mm-hmm. What the hell does that got to do with? Anything. Here, I got a question for uh, all the great people out there. Thank you. Why, when one black person or a few black people do something,